Hello and welcome to Hacking Essentials Network and Vulnerability Scan Course. My name is Moharam Aydin. I'm a computer engineer and cybersecurity expert, and I am the instructor of this course. In this course, we're going to learn how to find out the computer systems in a network, discover the network topology, detect the open ports of the systems, detect the versions of the services running on those ports, detect the operating systems running on the devices, and find and assess the vulnerabilities that exist on those devices. Before we begin, we should prepare for the course and for the hands-on practice that we're going to do. Throughout the course, we will use, well, a few devices. Kali is a Linux distribution which is prepared for ethical hackers. We're going to use Kali as the attacker system. Kali includes a lot of useful and free-to-use hacking tools, and we're going to use some of these tools. If you don't want to use Kali for some reason, you can download the tools that we use, install them to your host machine, and use them instead. One of the machines that I'll use is Metasploitable 2. Metasploitable is an intentionally vulnerable Linux virtual machine created by Rapid7, who produces Metasploit Project as well. This VM can be used to conduct security training, test security tools, and practice common penetration testing techniques. The VM will run on any recent VMware products and other visualization technologies such as VirtualBox. I'll show you how to download and use Metasploitable in a few minutes. You can use any virtualization platform such as Oracle, VirtualBox, VMware Player, etc. While using virtual environments, the virtual machines should be in the same network to see each other. We're going to use virtual machines in nut mode. If you're using VirtualBox, because of its architecture, you should create a nut network. If you use a virtual machine in nut mode without configuring any nut network, a network is created for that virtual machine, and it doesn't see other virtual machines even if they are in nut mode. Go to VirtualBox Preferences, select Nut Networks under Network Segment, Add Create New Nut Network. Then go to Virtual Machine Settings. In Adapter 1 tab under Network Segment, attach the virtual machine to Nut Network and choose the Nut Network you created. If you are using one of the VMware tools such as VMware Player, Fusion, or Workstation, using Nut Mode for network interfaces will be enough for the virtual machines to see each other. When you Google the word Metasploitable, you find the download link of Rapid7 in the first row. You can download it from the SourceForge.net as well, which is on the second line. There's another link that's the GitHub address of Metasploitable 3. Metasploitable 3 is another version of Metasploitable produced by, again, Rapid7. Let's go to the page. System requirements in the README section says that the Metasploitable 3 virtual machine requires 65 gigabytes of free space on my drive and 4.5 gigabytes of RAM. Well, these amounts are a little bit too much for me, so I'm going to use Metasploitable 2, though it's an excellent practicing machine. Turn back to the Google Search tab and click the first link to go to the official download page of Metasploitable. Fill out the form and click Submit to download Metasploitable 2 Linux Virtual Machine. I've already downloaded it and opened it with my VMware Fusion. I've got some other VMs here, OWASP, Broken Web Applications, and a Windows XP. You may download and use other systems like these for more scanning practice later. Let's look at the settings of Metasploitable. I'll use my virtual machines in nut network mode, and I allocated a gigabyte of RAM for it, which is the recommended amount. Now we're ready to run the VM.
As you see, there's a lot of services starting when the operating system starts. Username is MSF admin and password is the same. Check the IP address to see if it's in the same IP block with your Kali machine using if config command. Looking at the open TCP ports using netstat-tnlp command, you will see a lot of ports are open. And looking at the services up and running using ps aux command, you'll see a lot of services as well. These increase the attack surface of the machine. Since there are a lot of vulnerabilities in it, do not use the virtual machines in bridge mode, which are intentionally vulnerable, such as Metasploitable or OWASP broken web applications. If you use them in bridge mode, they will be accessible in the network where your host machine is. Someone in that network might hack the vulnerable virtual machines and try to access the host machine, which means your computer. If you would like to use virtual machines in host-only network mode, please learn how the virtualization platform works in that mode first. Before we start, let's be sure the virtual machines see each other. Start the virtual machines and log into them. If you didn't change the credentials before, you can log into Kali and Metasploitable 2 with a default credential. The default credential of the Kali is root as the username and tour as the password. The default credential of Metasploitable is MSF admin as the username and MSF admin as the password. First, let's learn the IP address of each machine. In Linux distributions such as Kali and Metasploitable, we can use the ifconfig command to learn the IP address. Open a terminal screen, type ifconfig, and press enter. The IP address, which is seen in the ETH0 interface, is what we want. In a Windows system, you can learn the IP address running ifconfig command in the command line. In your host machine, you will see more than one IP address for your system. You will see an interface with a name like VMNetX. This is the IP address that we use to interact with the virtual machines. By the way, it'll probably be the first IP address of that IP block. And then ping the other virtual machine. You should see a terminal screen similar to the screen seen on the slide. At least, Packet loss should be less than 100%. If you don't get such a result, please check the virtual machine settings again. The IP addresses of the virtual machines should be in the same IP block, which means if one of your virtual machines has an IP address like 172.16.99.123, the IP address of the other virtual machine should be like 172.16.99.222. Now we are ready for the hands-on practice for the course.